Hello? Hello? Can you guys hear me? Good? Hi, I'm Jason Lee. I'm a data scientist. And um, so one of the problems I've been having recently is um, kind of a personal relationship problem. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have these kinds of problems every once in a while, but um, the specific problem was an argument between me and my roommate, um, mainly about how much, how many chores he should do to help me around the house. Um, so, since I was uh, recently reading through the personality psychology literature at the time, I was kind of wondering um, how much of this difference was due to inherent personality differences. And I think one of the best ways to understand um, relationships and yourself is through personality. Um, so personality is kind of a complicated subject, but um, there's many different types of personality models out there. I think the one most people are most familiar with is called the Myers-Briggs, the MBTI. Um, the model I'm going to be using is called the Big Five, and one of the main reasons that I'm going to be using the Big Five is because it's the most studied personality model in psychometrics. So as a quick reference here, um, here's a Google Scholar search. Um, up there on the top is Big Five with 2 million hits, and Myers-Briggs right there is 34,000 hits. So they, they don't really study Myers-Briggs in uh, science. Um, so my, uh, the, the Big Five was basically derived through a technique called factor analysis, where they analyze um, questions derived from common descript descriptive adjectives, and they derived out five factors of personality. So here's the five factors. Um, you can easily remember the factors through the acronym OCEAN, and you can score either low or, low or high on each factor, so here's a kind of a visual aid to help you. Um, the first factor here is called openness to experience. This factor is basically about um, how interested in ideas you are and how, how much you like novelty and variety of experiences. Um, second factor is conscientiousness. This factor is basically about um, how orderly and organized you are and how, also how industrious you are. Um, third factor is extroversion. This factor basically um, is related to how you relate to people socially and how you experience positive emotions. Um, fourth factor is called agreeableness. This factor is basically about um, how trustworthy you are people and how sympathetic and compassion, compassionate you are. And the final factor is called neuroticism, which is basically um, how sensitive you are to negative emotion. Um, so to make a concrete example, here's my personality score. Um, you can see here it's in percentile, meaning this is um, my score how, and how it relates to the rest of the population. And on the right here is a radar graph, which I think is one of the best ways of visualizing personality. Um, so, you know, you can take a gander and feel free to judge. <laughs> um, I think my personality is pretty extreme in certain, certain areas. Okay, so on to the data science. So for the data, um, I use um, this website called My Personality. My Personality was basically um, an app in Facebook that recreated the Big Five personality test, and that, that allowed them to take personality data and also Facebook data. So they had things like Facebook statuses and network size and centrality and all those types of things. Um, so the, here's a few sample rows of the data. It's basically uh, Facebook statuses there on the left, and on the right here is um, personality scores for each trait and also personality categories for each trait. So this is the binary category, so like, are you extrovert or not? Um, so for the models I use, I use, um, since there's two types of data, categorical and um, continuous, I needed two different types of models. So the first model is a regression, random forest regressor, and the second model I use a random forest classifier. Um, so to train the models, I basically did a TFIDF uh, vector for, for each of the statuses to call some features. And since there were two models and five traits, um, I trained about 10 models in total. Um, so here's some model evaluation. Um, this is for the regression model and the model for each trait. Um, this is evaluated on means greater error, so we want to minimize this value. And as you can see here, the most performant model is the openness model. And that goes along with uh, what I kind of read in the literature. Some traits are easier to predict than others, and I think Openness is one of the easier to predict traits. Um, 
Here's for the classification models. Um, again, this, is, um, this evaluation is using accuracy, so we want to maximize this quantity. Um, as you can see, again, the openness model performed the best, and eroticism uh, performed second best. Okay, so now that we've trained our models, we, knew we can use them to make some predictions. So um, one of the things I did was I, I web scraped my own Facebook account. So I basically have around 400 friends. I took about 100 statuses from each of those friends. I ran the model on each of the statuses to make a personality prediction for each status. And then for each of the statuses, for each person in my friends network, I averaged the predictions across all their statuses to create a personality prediction for each person. Okay, so now that we have these predictions, we actually need a way to interface with them. So I made a, a web app called the Personality Analyzer, and I made this basically with uh, React.js, Material UI, which is a front end library, a web pack for JavaScript bundling, and Flask on the back end. Um, it's a local, it's only running locally now because a lot of the information was from my own personal uh, Facebook network, so a lot of privacy uh, conflicts and that kind of stuff. So the web app, basically has three portions to it. This first portion is a text predictor. It's basically you can input any type of text you want and hit the predict, bu predict button and then they'll shoot out some uh, predictions for personality for what the model thinks the author's personality is. Um, wait for this gift to load up again. Yeah, so you can see here the, the probability of each trait. This is the probability of the category. Um, the trait category and also the predicted trait score. Um, second part of the app is basically called the My Personality tab. This is basically, I recreated the big five personality tests within the app. So you can recreate, you can uh, retake the test um, to get your personality. So this is showing percentiles, how your score relates to the rest of the population, your scores, and also the, it generates a radar graph for your visualization. And so the final portion of the web app is, I think, the most interesting part. This part is basically the predictions for all your, my friends in the Facebook network, personality predictions, and the radar graphs. Um, so you can see here, there's percentiles, predicted percentiles, predicted scores, predicted probabilities, um, and the radar graph. But the most interesting part is, since you have your personality inside the database, you can um, compare your personality with the predicted personality of any one of your friends. So I added this compare function. So when you hit the compare button, it'll show you a direct comparison between your personality and your friend's personality. Okay, so see here, you can see, hit the compare. And I think one of the best parts of this is the visualiz visualization. So this is an overlay of both the radar graphs, and you can visually see exactly where um, your personality differs from your friends. And here's differences in personalities, side-by-side -side comparison, and magnitude of difference. So it's really interesting in understanding like what the predicted personality of your friends would be, and how your personality like, relates to them. Um, so for future improvements, I added an input function to put in the actual personality scores, since these are predicted personalities. Um, we want you want to be able to actually compare the real score, not the predictions. But the predictions are there just to get you started. Um, I'd add search and sort functions, like you know, searching for a particular friend, sorting by alphabetical or any, anything like that. Um, relationship functions, so like most similar or uh, most dissimilar personality. So um, grouping functions, anything like that, where you can um, compare personalities across all your friends and possibly a Twitter web scraper, so basically to scrape Twitter to get some statuses and run the model on, the, on Twitter to get some personal <coughs> predictions for famous people. And yeah, my name is Jason Lee, and uh, thanks for your time. Cool, all right, I'm live. That was a great presentation. Um, one problem uh, that I run into a lot um, when I'm sort of like scraping around for data and stuff like that on the web you know, is um, like I'll pull someone's Facebook profile up, let's say, and there really isn't a lot of posts. 
Right. Like there's just not enough maybe to even give a good classification. Mm -hmm. Did your project run into that problem or did you face that challenge anyway? Yes, yeah, so that's definitely a problem. So a lot of these, um, a lot of the statuses, so some people have like three statuses or two statuses. Um, a lot of other people could have like hundreds of statuses. So I didn't implement it in the feature in the product yet, but um, one way of solving that would probably be just to wait by status. So like if you have less than a certain amount of statuses, the predictions are obviously less accurate. So you know, I'd add some kind of metric so we could display like, all right, this prediction should be weighed like lower because they, they have only like two statuses. So it's obviously a problem. What was your training data set? The training data set is um, basically the, my, the my personality data set, and it's um, kind of deal like this, except there are a few other features like um, network centrality, density, and uh, in betweenness, a lot of a lot of other Facebook features. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to use those features in the model yet because kind of an unfortunate story, but my personality, they, I guess, um, did, it, did it have the statuses as part of the, the data set? Yeah, so okay. all the statuses have an associated personality score and a okay. categorical score. Okay. Um, I guess, and then you said you averaged all the scores together over a bunch of statuses. So you took Facebook posts to be equivalent to statuses, quite correct? Um, you said you went up, you scraped your friend's posts. Right, so the scraping the statuses, like the thing is like the statuses, you want the things only that the person often, right? So the posts are different from statuses. So posts it could be like anything, like they shared a link or someone tagged them in a post. Um, so I made it so the scraper would only scrape, it would filter out posts and only scrape like statuses that they actually author. So you okay? So then you were doing you were you were creating a TFIDF for each status, mm -hmm. and those are the features in the, in the model. Rather than just kind of coming up with an entire corpus for each user and then creating a TFIDF of that. Right. Okay. Uh, why, uh, and accuracy? You're are you reporting precision and, and recall? Um, no. The so when you say accuracy, what does that mean? Accuracy, well, this would just be the um, true positive, true negative over true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative. So do you, uh, do you have the, was your data set balanced? Uh, yes, it was. Um, I kind of looked through each of the traits. They had around 5,000 examples of each uh, category for each trait. So 5,000 positive class, 5,000 negative class for each trait. So it was pretty balanced. Um, so why wouldn't you report precision recall? Um, well, because of time restraints. Because I actually had an F1 score and that kind of stuff that I was going to compare it to um, scores in the academic literature. Um, so they reported an F1 score, which would um, incorporate precision, precision and recall. But um, in terms of time, time constraints, I couldn't really go over that. Yeah, she's already cutting it pretty close. Okay, uh, all right, thanks. Next is Pat Ross.